So hey guys, we're gonna go out and harvest some wild asparagus today. Thought I would take you guys along, show you what we're looking for, how we find these plants and identify them, uh, maybe some tips to go along with that, and also just talk briefly on a little bit of wild harvesting of, of edibles and some safety that goes along with some of that. So I've been a little hesitant to want to share some of this information, or more so the how-to. A lot of the videos I've done in the past of us going out and harvesting wild grapes, uh, wild asparagus, raspberries, blackberries, that type of stuff. I've more of just taken you along for more of the experience, but today I guess I wanted to touch on how we identify the plant. Part of the reason for that is I'm, I'm familiar with like the Midwestern area. I've grown up in Wisconsin and Minnesota, know this area pretty well, but I haven't lived down south or any other parts of the world. So I don't know a lot of the other species of plants in the area, and, and let's just admit it, there's a lot of them out there. So. For safety reasons, I really suggest you go out and get some information from a lot of different resources. There's a lot of great books out in the market and I really suggest getting your hands on several of them, especially ones that have a lot of photos in there of real actual pictures of the plant. Also, one thing I often look for in those books is when they address uh, poisonous lookalikes. That's another very big important thing. There's no such thing as like two plants being identical looking. There are a lot of times some little minor things that tell the difference between them. So out of all the wild edible books I own, I think the very top of my list is a book by Samuel Thoyer. It's the book called The Forager's Harvest. It's a guy, I believe he's written out of Wisconsin. He focuses on a lot of plants here in the upper Midwest, you know, your Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, and has a pretty good variety of stuff, but it's not one of those books that has all the plants listed but he goes into great detail on how to identify the plants, some of the poisonous lookalikes, harvesting the plant, using the plant, um, even has a fantastic calendar in there broken down by all the plants that are in the book and when the best time of year is to harvest. So you can open up that calendar, say, hey, it's springtime at this month and you can just go down the list and find all the plants that are are currently should be available in um, at least the upper Midwest. So one last thing I want to precaution on is um, do a little bit of research on the books that you select. Try to find ones that are specific to your area. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, the lookalike type of stuff is very, very helpful on making sure you don't end up with the wrong thing. But uh, some wrong information has been spread. I've read some articles about, I can't even remember the author or the particular plant, but there was one that had written about a plant and included some wrong information. Of course, several other writers came along and you can only be specialized in so many things. They made some references back to that writer and the wrong information ended up spreading across several different writers. So be a little cautious. Maybe go out and check some of the um, survival type forums, some foraging type forums, and some people can really help point you in the direction of some really good informative books. Like I said, my intention is not to scare you, but I want to I want to arm you with the right information. I don't think I'm doing myself any favor by keeping how to do this stuff to myself but at the same time, I don't want to put myself at risk or provide some wrong information for you. So um, I'd rather share this information, but just make sure you go out and do the research yourself. So wild asparagus tends to pop up a little bit later than the stuff in your garden because it doesn't get the full sun exposure. The stuff in our, our garden right now is quite large and we've been keeping an eye out for the wild asparagus and it's just now starting to pop up. And when it does, it seems to shoot up rather quickly. We generally find it along the roadside ditches, along the edges of farm fields, or sometimes even out in open fields. So one thing I would really recommend doing is finding some sort of GPS application, whether you have a handheld GPS or you can utilize your phone and, and some sort of app that goes along with it, and mark all the locations that you find the wild asparagus. We notice in our area there are several other wild asparagus hunters. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll take down the big, actually tall plant that helps you identify them as you're driving around. Uh, just so it's not as easy for other people to find them. And by being able to mark it in an app, it seems to work really well. There's an application I use on my phone. I have an iPhone. It sort of uses a dual purpose. I mark my hunting stands. It helps show me the wind direction. Uh, so sort of my scent cone when it comes time to do hunting season. So it comes very helpful for that. But it also allows me to mark other several GPS locations out there. And I can mark where all this wild asparagus is and it's very easy to find them the following year. So you can see it's a rainy day today, but rain never hurt anyone. We'll just go out, we'll be in the vehicle most of the time, we'll probably get our pants a little wet, but it uh, won't really hurt us, you know? And we'll get one up on the competition. I thought I would show you guys the stuff in our garden first, so you just at least get an understanding of the life cycle of asparagus. They come up in these little shoots, and you want to harvest them when they're pretty young, you know? Some are six, eight inches, and you just come in and you snap them off. And if you don't, they come up and they start growing like this. This is part of the reason we haven't harvested any of these in our garden this year. This is our second year uh, with these crowns in the ground. 
Uh, we ended up planting a handful of other ones, but they're definitely not as nice and thick and, and full as these. But you can see it turns into sort of this little tree looking thing that's, I don't know, somewhere between three to six feet tall. They develop these little round seeds on them that turn black as the season goes on. And this is what we're looking for when we're out driving around. Uh, not necessarily, I guess you can find uh, plants that have come along you know, early in the season, but we're looking for last year's and they tend to turn brown or a gray looking dried out branch thing. And then right along the bottom, you'll start finding all the shoots that are coming up. balls you can see it here's a big huge one that's been coming up it's gonna start turning into that little tree looking thing here's another one of those plants here if you look down right at the bottom you should hopefully find some Right there. The wild asparagus is a pretty easy plant to identify. There's not a lot of lookalikes out there. A lot of my books don't have anything listed. I have heard a few people getting a plant called Baptisia mixed up. It's sort of a flowering plant, and I guess there's a very short period of time that it somewhat resembles um, some stalks coming up from an asparagus plant. But if you understand that basic tree-like structure, uh, it's a pretty safe bet. But like I said, go out, do your own research. In the description below, I'll put a link. Um, asparagus grows in all 50 states. It grows in all the provinces in Canada. However, it doesn't grow everywhere. There are certain counties in certain states and this site will allow you to zoom in on your state and find the counties that have listed. Hopefully there's some growing in your area. Great resource out there. Today, you know, we went out in the rain. We didn't really put in very much time. It was a little hard just visibility wise trying to track down some of the plants as we're cruising along the roads and trying to figure out where to stop and take a look. But with just a little bit of time, we came home with a nice little mitt full and we'll have that for dinner tonight. And then as this rain starts to move out of our area over the next couple of days, we'll get out and we'll do a little bit more of a thorough job on that. So hope you guys found this video helpful. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.